perfect. Okay. I may have to jump back and forth with my calculator too, but that will be okay. Um, before we get into our 1.2 notes, I'm not technically assigning any homework, but what I do want before, by Wednesday of next week, Wednesday the 14th, I see you, I think it's a day two, I want all of your BFF graphs filled in. I want all of the domain range, everything on all of them. So you should have the picture and you should have the equation. And I believe we have a class that's done five or six of them. So we should have almost half of them done. I'm not gonna spend any more time in class doing them, but if you wanna do them during office hours with me or after school or during your research or something, I'd be happy to do that with you as well. And once you turn them in, I'll post an answer key so you can make sure that you have the right answers too, okay? So that's due by Wednesday of next week. I'm gonna walk around and check everybody's, make sure all your BFF graphs, every single thing is filled in, okay? So maybe since you don't have homework this weekend, that's a nice thing to get started on. Okay, we are doing 1.2 and we're jumping around. So like we'll get to number six. Um, we're gonna start on number one though. So we're essentially talking about special pieces of a function. And we're gonna explore kind of how to find all of those things. And the first thing that's special about these functions is um, the definitions. We gotta talk about what it is to be a function because I don't think we've explicitly talked about that yet. When you think of function, what do you think in your head? Does anyone have any words that pop out when you think function in your head? What'd you say? Like lines. Like lines, yep. Lines are the function you guys are super familiar with. Equations, okay. When I, am in my head, think about the word functions, I think about like a middle school, school term we learned, input and output. Is that something you guys learned too? Yeah. yeah. I like distinctly remember like a pre-algebra book that had like a little function machine and that like, like looked like something was getting put in and then something else popped out. So I always think of a little input, output, a little machine when I think about function. Another thing I want you to think of when you hear the word function is the term one-to-one. -one. Does that mean anything to you guys? You're like, I don't know this way, it's Friday. Okay, well, let me tell you what one-to-one -one should mean to you. One-to-one -one is the idea, I guess like the, the intense math word would be, uh, it's a rule that assigns every element in the domain with exactly one element in the range. We're not gonna write that down. We're gonna say for every X, there is exactly one y. So for every one, every x, there's exactly one y. If I plug negative two into my function, I should not get two different y's that come out. I should only get one y that pops out. Um, there is a physical way that we do this. Michael, the little pencil thing. Do you remember what it's called? Vertical line test. Very good. So the vertical line test is a way that I can tell it's a function. So like if I have a graph like this, I know that it's a vertical line, it passes a vertical line test because anywhere I draw a vertical line, it only crosses one time. The minute I get a graph that looks like this, like, um, like a sideways parabola, that is not a function because I have points where there are two y's that go to one x. So it's okay to have multiple, um, x's for one y so like for example like there are three zeros on this graph there are three x's that all have a zero as their y that's okay but every single x should have only one y so that's what the vertical line test tells us and we'll go practice that in a second but before we practice that i want to talk about the word continuous um do you remember what i told you continuous means in like normal people terms billy what do you think you don't have to pick up your pencil good so i asked myself like if it's continuous I didn't pick up my pencil. So I essentially think in my head, do I pick up my pencil? And you don't have to physically write that down if you know that, but like sometimes I like to write that down because that, that's a super easy thing to say to myself. Like, oh, did I pick up my pencil? No, I did. No, I didn't. Or yes, I did. So I asked myself that. Um, there's a more intense definition right here. It's where X equals A if and only if the limit of my function as x approaches a is that function. It just means that there is a point everywhere. There's a point everywhere. So let's do a couple examples. 
I'm going to give you one example of continuous, and I'm going to show you three non-continuous examples, three examples of discontinuity. So my continuous function could be something like this. I'm just going to do like a little nice little curly guy. I didn't pick up my pencil once to draw that little polynomial graph. That's a continuous function. I did not pick my pencil up once. It is continuous. We are all good. Now, on the contrary, I've got two examples of removable discontinuity. I'm going to try and use the same model of the graph to show you how they're different. So the first one is if I draw my graph and I have a point that is just an open circle instead. That means for whatever reason, there is no value here. It's an open circle. Did you see how I had to stop and draw an open circle and then continue my graph? That's an example of how I didn't, I had to pick up my pencil. I couldn't draw it without picking up my pencil. The other way you could do removable discontinuity is almost the same. I still have an open circle, but I have a closed circle somewhere else on the graph that's on that same X line. So it's still a function and it's actually its domain is still all real numbers because technically there's a point every single place, but it's like I took that point and I like moved it away on the graph somewhere. So removable discontinuity, I think, okay, I just took one piece and I physically removed it or I moved it somewhere else on the ground. Removable discontinuity. Jump discontinuity is exactly like it sounds. Essentially, I've got my graph, I'm doing fun things, and then all of a sudden I jump away from that point and jump somewhere else on the ground. So maybe it looks something like that. I'm trying to keep it in the same line. It's a little bit off, but just pretend with me. So I physically, I was doing my little discontinuity and I didn't just remove like a point, like I removed like a whole chunk of the graph and I jumped it somewhere else. So that's called jump discontinuity. The last one is non-removable or infinite discontinuity. My best example of that is a reciprocal graph. Do you remember what a reciprocal graph looks like? Yeah, the little like C's in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. I make it less shaky. Good. So those are my removable and um, infinite discontinuity. We're going to come back to two, but let's go talk about these two things. Go to number six. So scroll down on, on your 1.2 or flip your paper until you get to number six. So you go past one, go past two, go past three, go past four, go past five. At the bottom of one of these pages, I've got six and seven. We're going to do those two really quick. Again, I apologize for jumping around a little bit on you. So Michael already brought up the idea of a vertical line test. So why don't we talk about it now? Vertical line test, is it a function or is it not? Letter A, what do we think? Yeah. Yes, right? It passes, we say yes. What about letter B? No. No. All right, letter C. Oh. So we see the little parabola thing. So we're like, oh, it looks kind of like a parabola. Let's get the y by itself. If I get the y by itself, what would that make that little parabola thing do? So y equals the square root. Y equals the square root. And when I take the square root of something, what should go in front of that square root? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. You're good. And when we have a plus or minus, that means that y equals the positive square root and it equals the negative square root. Do you remember what your square root function looks like? It starts at zero, zero, and it just kind of like pops off over to the side. It's like half a parabola. When I do the plus or minus, I'm also doing the negative side of that parabola. If I were to graph that and do my vertical line test, is that a function or no? No, no, no. And last one, x equals 12 minus y. Let's get y by itself. That makes a little bit more sense, right? Let's move that 12 minus 12. X minus 12 equals negative Y. We'll divide by that negative to get Y all by itself. So I get negative X plus 12 equals Y. What do we think? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of function is that? Linear. Linear. Good. So that's fine. All right, the last two are, the last two on this side that we're going to do are um, identifying types of discontinuity. I'm actually going to graph these on the calculator because we haven't talked yet about rational functions and asymptotes and disincluding points. So let's graph these on our calculators really quick. My phone's not dead. We'll graph on my phone. 
Maggie, you need to make fun of where my phone's at battery wise today. Oh, it's a point she's going to look at first, too. Oh my God, this way. 